Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Sasquatch Speaks. This is Sasquatch, otherwise known as Gaviosas, welcome you all once again to our dark little corner of the internet. And, um, preparing for today's topic. Yes, today's topic, uh, brought to you again by nobody, because we're not big enough for a sponsor. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, not really a joke at all. I don't know why I was trying to make it into one. I'm so sorry. I have no sense of humor. I am not funny. Why are you still watching me? <laughs> anyway. For today, um, I want to talk a little bit about a couple weeks ago. Uh, I went up to visit my grandmother, and uh, while I was up there, you know, I didn't have any sort of internet or anything, and big thanks to Mama Sass and helping me get all my videos out, and, you know, while I was not here and able to access the, video, the internet, and so thanks to her. But that point here, kind of the thing that brought this into mind, is as we were making the four-hour drive up, well... It should have taken four hours. Um, it only took us three and a half. We won't talk about how that happened, but it did. Just to acknowledge that it did. We got up there a little bit faster than uh, the posted speed limit said we should have, but, you know, that's uh, that's one thing, and this is another. Um, <laughs> well, I guess it could be considered the same thing, depending on how on how this goes. Um, but uh, as... Uh, as we're getting closer to our destination, it goes me and Papa Sass and my sis. And I don't have a, a, a Sasquatch name for my sister, so um, we're just gonna leave that as it is. Uh, I don't think she's not deserving of the Sasquatch moniker, so she doesn't get it. She's my sister. Um, we're driving up there, and as we we're, like I said, as we were approaching our destination, we came into this very large, broad, open expanse of, well, not really an open expanse because there's a bunch of trees, but there's a rather long stretch of woods as we're driving through. And I, I don't know precisely where it was in relation to where we were driving, but there's a, a fairly large state or county prison or something up state or county, I'm not sure which one, but either case, it's a prison in that area. And as we're driving, we notice this sign along the side of the road going through this very wooded forest, and uh, we looked over and it said, Prison area, do not pick up hitchhikers. I'm like, okay, let's examine this for a second. Just, just for a second. Prison area, okay, I understand there are many people who do very many bad things and they need to be incarcerated for doing them. Yes, okay, agreed. No objections to that in the slightest. People who do bad things should be punished for them. Um... Uh, no, no arguments. Do not stop to pick up hitchhikers. Well, first things uh, first. In Michigan, where where I live, it is illegal in the entire state to pick up any hitchhikers. We're, we're very unsociable people. They call us the cold north down south because we're so cold and unwelcoming and uninviting. We don't pick up anybody along the road. You might just need a ride to the next town, man. Just might need a ride. So it's illegal. It's it's illegal. To um, to pick up hitchhikers, again, it's it's the middle of the forest, so you know that, that's where the, that's where the serial killers hang out anyway. So no one's going to stop there anyway. Plus, it was like twelve thirty at night. So thought about it a little bit more. Okay, prison area illegal to pick the pick up anyone anyway, but specifically posted at this point. They are assuming not only that there could be someone who is either unaware of that law or just doesn't care. And they're, they're nice folks. They want to help out everybody they possibly can. And so they come across someone on that lonely stretch of wooded road and, Hey, you're a hitchhiker? Jump in my car. Let's take you up to the next place and it'll work out. You'll get a nice place to stay and it'll be... It'll be good. You can call your folks or your friends or someone who can come get you and it'll it'll work out for the better. Now we're assuming, first of all, there is that sort of a nice person just going to happen to be there at that time in order to pick up, assumedly, an escaped prisoner because otherwise why would they care about posting specifically that this was a prison area? Okay. Question. How did this hypothetical prisoner hypothetically get out of the hypothetical prison? Just curious. I mean, obviously it's a concern that 
there is going to be a prison break, and somebody, maybe more than one somebody, because it did say hitchhikers, might just be in general, to try and apply to generality, let's just say it's two people walking down the road. Orange jumpsuits, handcuffed together. First of all, I see folks in orange jumpsuits, and generally that's what they wear in there. At least that's what all the prison movies show me, show me nowadays. So they're in bright orange jumpsuits in the middle of the woods, probably chained together. Just even that kind soul who wants to help people. Probably not going to pick that person up. Probably not. I mean, I'm not. You can, like, escape from prison, call 911. Hey, there's a escapee out here. The two of them, they're chained together. They can't go real fast. If you'd like, I could swing around at him with my door and make sure they don't go anywhere for a while. No? that That's illegal. That put me... Okay, I, I won't do that. I'll, I'll just go on my merry way. That's where they were. You get them. Okay. Good luck. They're in bright orange. You can't miss them. I mean, it's the middle of the woods. You make us wear that every year for hunting season so you can find people in the woods. Um, which, come to think of it, makes me feel like I'm now... Now makes me think that I'm like a convict or something for trying to go hunting and, you know... Providing food and meat for my family instant. Well, <laughs> I don't because I'm really bad at it, but <laughs> that's a whole other story. It's not that I don't. It's not that I cannot hit animals with the gun. I've expressed before that I do have that capability of pointing a gun in a direction and generally hitting what I'm aiming it at. I just don't ever pick the right spots or whatever that is. Not, not really the point. The point here is, well, now, well, the, the side point here is that now I feel like a, uh, like a, some sort of a felon or something for trying to just kill animals for sport and meat. I, 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 don't, I don't think I like how that makes me feel now that I think about it. I'm going to write my congressman. <clears throat> anyway, what we're talking about now is, uh, the, you know, these, uh, escaped convicts, you know, walking down the road prison in the area so that would generally be where they were if they escaped still brings me back to that question of how did they get out and why I mean I understand safety precautions and don't want anyone to get mugged or killed or carjacked or anything else like that That'd just be a bad situation but the point I'm still making here is just how unconfident is the justice system in their prisoner retention capabilities. I mean, it's the middle of the woods. First of all, they not only have to get out of, I mean, first of all, I'm assuming, I'm assuming I could be wrong, I haven't actually been to a prison ever in my life, I've just seen prison movies, or I've seen prisons on TV shows or something like that, so... Don't haven't actually been there. Never stepped inside. Heard this clit, the uh, the gates go clang and all that sort of stuff. So not really a part of my experience. But the point remains: if you're going to assuming, like I said, assuming that I have a proper concept of what a prison is, it's generally a gigantic freaking wall, twenty feet tall. It's concrete. Got guards posted all over it. Barbed wire, fences, dogs, lots of guns and searchlights all around the outside. That's got to take some doing to get through that. Plus, plus, like I said, inside of that wall, there's a bunch of other guards with guns and tasers and clubs and uh, mace and the whole nine yards there. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's another little obstacle. Plus, when you're inside, you're... Or being shuttled between places, you know, chained together. When you're out in the yard, I guess you're okay, but there's a lot of guns on you there. You really don't want to risk that. Go a little bit deeper into the prison where you're actually held most of the time. By my understanding, of course, I've never actually been into a prison. Uh, I have no intention of going into one either. But assuming that my assumptions are correct. I'm assuming that an assumption, that's a that's a far reach, isn't it? Oh, well. But assuming that my assumptions are correct, my the... The concepts which are displayed to me through popular media are, are factual, at least to some extent. Inside the prison, there's a lot more concrete, first of all. Big, thick, heavy walls and big, thick, heavy doors with guys standing near them all the time with guns who will shoot you if you try and get past them without their permission. 
Uh, that, that's a bit of a challenge, isn't it? And then uh, go a little bit further on, and there's a bunch of more doors, and you go on a little bit farther, and there's the actual cells with the heavy iron bars, or some of them have like some sort of um, like break-resistant glass. I don't understand how that works, but apparently it does, because I haven't heard any stories of big prison breaks lately. So have all this, plus helicopters, and like I said, trail dogs, and a big, gigantic, open field all the way around the thing, so that if anyone does happen to somehow break through the wall, um, they're going to get shot. I mean, they'll be like, hey, there's a guy in a bright orange jumpsuit running through the middle of the field. I wonder if he belongs inside the building. Hmm, let me think about this for a really long time, maybe till he gets to the edge of the woods and be like, yep, he should be in here, bang! That guy's dead. I mean, it's a federal crime to break out of. It's a federal crime to break out of prison. So they have. They're within their rights, and it's their job to keep you in there, or something like that. So, totally within their rights. If you're if you're in prison, please don't find yourself in prison. I would hate for that to happen to any of you. But if you find yourself in prison, you think, hey, I want to break out. Remember that uh, they assume that if you break out of prison in any fashion, that you are dangerous. Whether you're armed or not, or they, they're just going to assume that you are armed and dangerous because you got out of prison and you're a bad man. Rawr. And they see you, they're going to go bang. It'll be over. Bad stuff. Don't, don't do that. First of all, don't get into prison. So with all of these layers of the security, I'm assuming, generally, it's a pretty far stretch of the imagination that anyone's getting out of there. Unless, of course, you know, parole or, hey, you served your time. Yay, hey, the charges were dropped or something. I don't know. Some legal way, unless someone says, hey, you can go now, probably going to stay there. Probably. At least I'd hope so, because like I said, these are bad people. They're, well, generally, there's, there's all, there, are, there are some instances, you know, of false accusations and false arrests and the whole and covering up evidence. And, eh, we won't talk about that. But then, Generally, most of them, they're pretty bad folks. They did some bad stuff. Maybe maybe not really bad stuff. We're not going to get into the ramifications of the whole war and drugs, things or anything else like that. But, you know, there's 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 some people out there who do some bad stuff. Okay. People do bad stuff. You want to keep them in there. And you have all these layers of security. The big wide field, guys in the towers with guns, dogs, chains, the whole nine yards. Plus... Like I said, I'm assuming this is quite a ways away, you know, maybe five, six miles. It's quite a ways to go through the woods with a chain around your ankle. You may not, you may have escaped out of the yard and not have it, but you probably have a bullet in you if that's the case and you're bleeding. You're probably not going to get real far, even if you do get somehow outside the exterior wall. At least I'd hope not. And, and this is kind of my point. I would hope not. I mean... If you're trying to keep them in there, nothing's sadder than people who aren't very good at their jobs. I mean, hey, you, you put them in there for a reason. You should, and you built up this gigantic ring of defense specifically designed to keep them in. You, you're not having difficulties with it, are you? That you now have to warn the general public that uh, we might see those escaped guys in the orange jumpsuits with the chains around their ankles. Uh, running through the woods going, Hey, we got out! I I, I really... Uh, it just struck me as wrong. As something was not right with the situation. To the point that... The government, that's who runs the prisons, or most of them, there's some privatized ones now, but, you know, generally, government runs the prisons. Or they, they have some major say in what goes on, even to the private ones. So, they, they, they can say, okay, well, this level of security is insufficient. Okay. So, we're going to build... We're, first of all, we're going to clear this gigantic ring of land. So, if anyone gets outside the wall, they're dead. Just basically, hey, we see you. You're bright orange in the middle of a field. You're going down, dude. Ouch. Okay. And there's the gigantic wall. Like I said, they have to get outside the wall. Get past all the guys with the guns and the dogs and the razor wire and the whole, the, all that. Okay, that, that's... Sounds rather difficult. 
And you're assuming either that these measures are insufficient or that there's going to be someone who is such a genius or just tough enough, you know, that he's going to break out. Why not just add a little bit more security? I mean, you've already got all that. It's not going to be like, oh, it's overkill. No, no, not, not going to be overkill. If, if you're trying to keep someone in there, makes sense to me, look. Hey, if there's some doubt, if there is enough doubt as to whether or not you have the ability to retain prisoners to the point where you're informing the general public, hey, one of them might get out and might want to ride in your car. Don't let him do that. If you get to that point where it's like, hey, we got all these folks here and they might get out. I mean, they, 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 they might, you know. We got the guard towers and the guns and the machine guns and the snipers and the dogs and the razor wire and the bars and all the concrete and the wall and the, and the gigantic killing field right outside. But they might get out. Add something else. Don't even let that doubt come into your mind. I mean, even if you just want to make them think about it. Just, just think about it. What you do is, you, he, he, here's my idea. If, if you have that much concern that you're now informing the general, gen, the general public that you do not have the confidence by saying, hey, if there's hitchhikers don't, in bright orange jumpsuits, don't pick them up. What? <laughs> if you get to that point where you're going, oh, yeah, these guys might get out. Here's what you do. Don't spend any money. Okay, pay two guys a bunch of money, or not a bunch of money, but like, Give them 50 bucks for the day. You know, they'll, they'll, this will do them. Here's what you do. You send them out with backpacks, and you give them just like little folded up bits of tin foil. okay? Something bright, shiny, metallic looking. And everyone in that yard that day, make sure everyone gets their turn in the yard that day. Just just watch it. Okay? And, and, and put these guys out just, just far enough in the field that they can't really see quite where they're digging or or what they're doing or what the what those shiny bits of metal are and uh, you just have them bury these little little bits of tinfoil all day long just work in this field go all around the prison the whole thing just make sure that all of those guys in there see these guys do it when they're done you take a big old wooden sign and you plant it right in front of the place right right in front of the yard with like the arrow pointing back towards where they were bearing all this stuff. Like I said, don't actually have to put anything back there. Just, just make it look like you did. And right on the and right on that sign, spray paint minefield. All of their plans of escape just ended. They're like, okay. So I was thinking about escaping because clearly these guys don't have it. They're informing the general public that we could get out. Oh, don't pick us up off the road. And so we were, we, we got confidence. Hey, they were informed of the general public. We, there must be some fatal flaw. There is the, the uh, ventilation shaft on the Death Star to this place, and we are going to find it. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna, to like gnaw through the bars of our cell, expose ourselves to the guards, because we don't have anything on us, and just like shock their eyes out. Oh, I can't see. Oh. Run, bit, run up to them, knock them out, take the keys, open the door, run through the door. More guards expose ourselves. Oh, I can't see. Run through, grab those, get past the door, treats the dogs, you know, uh, distract them, distract them. You don't want the dogs biting you. It's bad. Grab some, grab some wire cutters because clearly there's wire cutters somewhere. There's always wire cutters in prison escape movies. Always wire cutters. No one ever explains where they come from, but there's always wire cutters. So get those, those magical wire cutters that just appear out of nowhere. Cut through the fences and the razor wire. Get up to the wall. Throw the grappling hook because there's always one of those two. You have to have to remember. Have to remember to get your magical wire cutters and your magical, you know, grappling hooks. You can get through the wires, through the razor wire, and over the wall. Absolute necessities. Don't ask me where they come from. They just appear out of nowhere. They just they're just there. And it's like, no, I'm not gonna get into that. Let's just say there's a whole there's a, there's a high level of bull crap associated with with some of those movies. Okay, so you get your magical wire cutters, you get your magical grappling hook, you get up over the wall, and all of a sudden you realize, oh crap, there's a minefield right in front of me. I, we, we watched them bury the stuff. Uh, okay, and then, uh, don't forget the guards and towers who, you know, what, what, flashing, oh, I can't see my eyes, oh, no. 
terrible. Uh, they can't see anymore, so you got you got the open field, you're running no oh, what's that sign say? Minefield? Well, I wasn't here last week. Was that what those guys were those two guys, you know, the ones who were just like digging in the holes? Was was that them? Because they I thought they put yeah, they were the ones who put the sign here, right? Yeah. And they got the spray paint, yeah, and that minefield. Um now, does that start on this side or that side of the sign? Because if it's on this, if it's on that side, I'm just going to turn around and go back because I don't want to die. Just don't. It's not in my plans for this whole escape thing. I'm going to stay here. I'm just going to go back. Starts on this side. I'm just going to stay here and let them pick me up because I'm not going back that way and blowing up either. Just pulling this out. If you're really concerned, like I said, don't spend any a lot of money. It'd be like 200 bucks. Get a bunch of tin foil, some rocks, some wrapped with rocks and tin foil. Hire a couple of guys to go out there, not prisoners because that's stupid. Hire a couple of guys out there, guards or something. Just dig holes, put the rocks with the tin foil on them into the holes. What are those shiny metal things the guards out there are burying? Oh, there's a gigantic sign that says minefield past this point. Hmm. My stay in prison just became much more tolerable because, you know, assuming I can get past the bars and the walls and the doors and the guards and the guns and the dogs and the razor wire and the gigantic freaking wall and the gigantic field of killing death from the snipers in the towers, Mines. Too much. Just too much. That's my suggestion. That is my, my impetus to the federal government everywhere. Don't let your prisoners escape and harry, you know, drivers on the highway with calls for <laughs> with calls for hitchhiking in their orange jumpsuits with chains around their ankles. You know, just 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 don't even allow for that possibility. Get yourself a big old box of rocks, wrap them in tinfoil, bury them, put up a sign. Perfect, perfect, perfect um, prisoner retention tool. Anyway, I think that's all I got for today. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you found that a little bit more lighthearted, perhaps, than some of my previous things. I know I was just talking about killing people, but you, know, this a, you take what you can get. I'm a very dark and depressing person. Not funny at all. I believe I started the show off that way by saying I'm not funny at all. Hopefully at this point you figured it out. Um, yes. Anyway, thank you all for stopping by. If you did enjoy, like rating down below, be very much appreciated. If not, a dislike rating, a nasty comment telling me to stop being such a bloodthirsty warmonger would be very much appreciated. I probably will not stop from being a bloodthirsty warmonger, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, I thank you all once again for stopping by. I hope you did enjoy. I will see you all next time. Goodbye.